Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd Soup. I am Bo Oliver, joined here today by Aaron, the Nerd Soup Monkey, and we are here to talk about, you already know what we're here to talk about, the Batman. Or I should do more like Pattinson, the Batman. Or Bale, the Batman. So, Aaron, what did you think about the Batman? Overall thoughts? Was it good? Was it terrible? Better than the Dark Knight? Just kidding. Just give me your thoughts. Let's not compare it to other movies. But is it better than Batman Begins? (laughs) Yes. <laughs> um, like we, We've talked about this movie on the way home, and it's just something I've been thinking about since then until this very moment. And like it, it really is the type of movie that like the more it sits with you, the more I've come to like really, really like it. And like I was going to see it again, obviously, but, but I'm thinking this is like a three or four time in a theater type movie. I think it warrants it, too, because it is so long. There's so much to unpack with the actual storyline. But yeah, it's definitely a movie I want to revisit many, many times. And I think what stands out the most is just the Batman universe. Right. It's a great foundation for the Bat universe. I think, like what I said, like, it's not the best movie that has Batman in it, but it is the best Batman movie, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think the way they delved into this character and the live action Batman Matt, Matt Reeves brought to us is prob- is the I think it's the best version of this character in live action and obviously that's also due to Robert Pattinson who I think was just fantastic I think from the very first opening scene I was giggling in my chair not because anything funny was happening but it was the Batman I've always wanted to see right that of uh, first voiceover when he's talking about what the character means to him and what he means to the city what he wants to accomplish this man is a full-fledged psychopath this is a person obsessed not because he's you know dealing with the trauma of losing his parents but because he likes the thrill because he likes it he's enjoying it yeah that opening like I said from the first scene to the final scene he is Batman Right. And, you know, it's not the typical origin scene. It obviously picks up in year two, so he's a bit more established. Uh, and like I just mentioned, the the supporting characters around him, all of those actors, this may be the best Batman ensemble cast. Oh, yeah. The cast was fantastic. I think, uh, I don't think there's like a miscast at all. And we had like some reservations of Colin Farrell with the heavy makeup. I thought he was great. Although, like, I still lean towards maybe just having it be Colin Farrell or getting a different actor, but um, his performance was <laughs> probably one of my, like, surprisingly one of my favorites in the film. He was surprisingly funny. I yeah. didn't expect Penguin to be, and he was a bit more intimidating than I think previous Penguins the that film, we've seen. The film itself was, it wasn't like, it was organically funny, like just moments where, like, of some levity that I think really were well placed at, well placed throughout the film. Uh, and Gotham, like you said, like this could be my favorite Gotham I've seen because it's very much a character in this movie. That uh, as the the more time you spend in this world, the more everything just seems to fit and work. Because in the beginning, it's kind of like you always have that aspect of Batman where you're just like, this is ridiculous. There's a guy in a bat suit walking around and like he's with the crime scene and all things like that. But as it progressed, it fit more and more and more. And the aesthetics of it was more of like comparing to other Batman films. I think it had a nice blend of Nolan's realism and a little bit of uh, Tim Burton's kind of weirdness not to any extreme but it kind of like blended some of those aspects and created like a really interesting gotham where it is modern day but it almost feels like it's 70s and 80s at the same time and that w- <laughs> yeah it's got this feeling of a stagnant city yes that it's a city in decay a city that's struggling to move on and obviously that that relates to the overall story but even joel schumacher's gotham mm-hmm. the movie is terrible but how how it's lit how it has personality i felt that with this gotham as well that like you said it, it was a character in the movie yeah that it wasn't just random city streets it felt like an actual city that batman had to protect and yeah to going back to batman like just the world's greatest detective we talked about at length how we always wanted to see a down gritty batman detective story and this is what we got like you said he is just he's this fucking psychopath he's like you can tell right away that he is some he's stunted in some ways emotionally and obviously we know the backstory of what happened to him and like that really shows in this character more so than i think any other version of this character because it really and it, it, like you said it's still early so we're still he's still kind of of trying to figure out who he is and kind of what his place and what what he's trying to accomplish in this movie. So I think they actually portray that very, very well. Right. It's Batman whose greatest power is his mind. And this Batman was just, you know, obviously he's he's definitely the smartest Batman we've ever seen. And choosing the Riddler is, that's why he's my favorite Batman foe, because he does test Batman mentally. It's just not about the physicality. But this is a character who was just simmering 
with rage and anger throughout the whole movie. And the way that they use the action, where it's these small bursts, Mm -hmm. it's a very slow paced throwback to a 1970s noir. Obviously, it's got the Fincher influences as, as well with Zodiac. The brutal moments of action, they just sneak up on you. And this man was walking around giving out concrete naps to anyone who wanted it. I will sleep you and then I'll now talk. This was now talk, Batman. Dude, yeah, like like you, <laughs> concrete naps. I love that. Uh but yeah, like it is that detective noir style film, but then it, it like it intertwines so many other things. Like it, when those action sequences come and it's a Batman and like you get that fear that he invokes, it comes turns into a little bit of a western. And the theme, my god, that has just been <laughs> in my head and in the film, like it like the film itself just slowly simmers and builds and builds and builds. It is it's so well done. Best Batman chase scene, I think, with the Batmobile. Yes. Uh, um, it, that was, I was in my seat just like, I, I think like for me, like an indicator of like what, how much I'm liking a movie is I just stop thinking at a certain point. Yeah, right, I'm right. Just, it, You're just lost in it. Yeah. I just stop thinking, brain empty. I'm just letting it consume me. And that happened like relatively quick in this movie. And I think it's, it's Batman's greatest challenge on live action. He was being thrown to the lion's den Mm -hmm. just from every corner he was he was being overwhelmed by the villains in the movie by the conspiracy that was set up by the riddler uh and like i said it it is his greatest challenge but he was up for it you know that that's if you're going to give us detective batman grim batman grimy gotham city then the 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 villains have to match that as well Mm -hmm. uh so i thought paul dano's riddler was a terrifying presence throughout the movie and like i said obviously you have the the zodiac influences as, as well but even the penguin and the mob the mob felt like the actual mob when you go back and watch the nolan movies they're they're a bit goofy but these guys felt like underground slum lords that had a grip on gotham city that batman needed to loosen um but you know just going back to robert pattinson's performance under the mask he's great throughout the whole movie but those eyes that's what I know. Burn a fucking hole through the wall. The way that he was observing every single little detail in every scene, it, it, it filled me with so much elation. <laughs> I was thinking about that on the way here. I'm like, I'm such a, like, like a, Batman's a favorite character. And like, one of the things I get hung up on, which is insane to get hung up on, I was like, I want the white eyes. I want Batman with the white eyes. But like, what you realize, especially with his performance, is that takes away so much of the character in live action, where, like you said, those eyes just tell a whole story with without even having to say a word. Yeah, he's just so good at looking at things, Robert yeah. Pattinson. Even the, the scene when he's as Bruce Wayne at the memorial, the, you know, that was a scene that was uh, released a few weeks ago and it's in its entirety. He, he doesn't speak a word, but you're getting everything you need to know about that character, and that's throughout the whole movie. And like I said, the slow burn simmering pace of this film, not everyone's going to love that, but no. I, I my hat's off to, I, I tip my hat to Matt Reeves because this is the second time he's done that, where he's taken a big blockbuster and said, no, we're going to take our time with this. Yeah. We're going to let this develop and build, and like I said, simmer to these explosive moments. It, it just pays off every single time. I and think- obviously, I, I think it's a story, sorry to cut you off, no. I think it's a story that... It, it's a little sloppy in its execution, especially in the second half. You know, there's a point where you think that the movie is actually wrapping up and then there's like another 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that could have been cleaner. But when you're going so big and so ambitious, I'm not surprised that not everything was as clean as it could have been. No, I think maybe like just a little off the top, but not like when you tell a barber to do that and they like trim your whole hair off, but like what you actually want. Just a little off the top, I think could have made it a little cleaner. It is a very plot driven film where I think a lot of it relies on the audience's knowledge of Batman, which I do like, kind of like with Spider-Man, where it's like, all right, we know who this character is. Let's just jump in and we can focus on other aspects that are more important to what we're trying, the story we're trying to tell. Um, But I think some of the drawbacks there are, it's like when you're trying to establish this new character and and new Batman and new world, even though it's familiar, there are still certain aspects that like, I think they could have delved just a little bit more into, but, um, yeah, it is, it is very plot driven. And at times it does kind of, it's, everything's very intertwined. So like, I think that was a benefit to it where all the different characters and, uh, villains are kind of all in the same path. But like, I feel like they diverge a little bit too much and go back and forth at times where they spend a little bit too much time. Then you kind of leave a character to the side for a little bit. And then, um, it kind of hurts that in that aspect, but not to any major degree. Yeah. I think the only character I really wanted more from was Alfred. And I thought Andy Serkis was a good Alfred. 
so many great actors have played that character, so you're stepping in the shoes of, of giants. I wanted a little bit more with Bruce and Alfred. Uh, I've seen some complaints that there's not a lot of Bruce Wayne in that, this movie. Yeah, but- the Bruce Wayne was lacking, but I can also, I think we talked about it on the way home, like... I attribute that to him being a young Batman where he doesn't really know, like he he hasn't became Bruce Wayne yet, if that makes sense. Cause no, if, it does. It totally if, does. If we're if he's Batman, if Batman is like who he actually is, he hasn't created the alter ego of Bruce Wayne yet. So the two kind of blend and we don't really get to see that part of him. Yeah, and that's always a point of contention between Bruce Wayne and Alfred, is Alfred wants to push him to use that Bruce Wayne persona more. We've seen that in movies. We see it in comics all the time, and that's part of Batman's development, is knowing that he can use his position of power as Bruce Wayne to help his crusade. And that's that's I think that's part of his growth in this movie as well. Commissioner Gordon, obviously he's not commissioner yet. He always starts out as detective or lieutenant, whatever he was, played by Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> another character who's been played by so many great actors but I loved how it felt like they were partners like a movie like Seven yeah. that they were both on the case together they were working hand in hand um, so <laughs> their relationship was really funny actually yeah. it, it had some not buddy cop elements but the way that Gordon was bringing attention to how ridiculous Batman you know the scenario actually is to me was was great and like you said the comedy is very natural and also his relationship with Catwoman to me that's the best Catwoman we've seen in live action Zoe Kravitz yeah I I mean Michelle Pfeiffer just still holds like a <laughs> fair <laughs> yeah um, her version of the cat like Catwoman was probably like and her relationship with Batman was probably one of the better parts of the film and one a relationship they spend a lot of time trying to develop and I think it works very well because it is that same type of uh, reminded me kind of like of the Arkham games kind of their relationship in those more so than um, any other live action version we've seen and yeah she was fantastic I think she had some of the better action sequences in the movie dude the action was so well done dude like I said the way that he was sleeping people in this movie but her too yeah very agile. I, I love when movies do that. When they take a someone who's small and tiny, you underestimate them, and they just kick the shit out of you. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the third act. I, I've seen a lot of people say that it loses steam, and I think that's a fair criticism. But there's something near the very end of the movie that happens that I think really saves it. It doesn't derail the movie whatsoever. I think this is one that, like, definitely upon second viewing or even third, I think I'll like even more. I'm, I like it more than right now than when I left the theater because I was still just trying to process everything and go back and really think about what I liked and what what really resonated with me. And then just to realize the things that um, maybe a little bit biased because being such a big Batman fan, knowing the character and wanting to see these certain elements for so long and finally getting them, obviously I'm going to be very excited after leaving the theater. But I think like when you when you go back and look at it and just the story and all the different elements they're able to introduce and how they were able to keep it kind of relatively tight knit for um, everything they were trying to do, uh, everything he was trying to do, I think is actually very impressive. And a lot of the shots too, it just looked... V- <sighs> oh, Greg Frazier. I mean, he's someone who's working at the top of his game right now. Mm-hmm. Matt Reeves, though, uh, with his previous movies, they've always looked stunning, and this is no exception. I mean, this not, might be the best-looking yeah. Batman movie. I mean, obviously you could take the screenshots of Batman looking at the, you know, the orange sky in the background, like, oh, that looks good. But I think the way the action was filmed, I think a lot of the uh, the sets and the way they were able to... A lot, of, a lot of the movies, like, seemed... Like, obviously Gotham is this huge city and I have a lot going on, but when it really got personal, I think the sets got a little bit smaller and was focused on there. So a lot of times when you had these little personal interactions, it felt like their own little section of the world that they were just in at that moment. And I think it was very, it, the way they were able to capture um, those scenes, I think added a lot to not only just the film itself, but just a lot of character. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely moments where it feels like the world is closing in on Batman. So it makes it more enjoyable to watch when he has to get out of these sticky situations. And even, you know, I just want to comment on the way that he moved in the suit. When he was trying to figure out, trying to deduce the riddles, trying to solve this mystery, his movements were so slow, so calculated. Smartest man in the room, and I don't think we've seen that yet with Batman. Um, yeah, and you're talking about, like, just the riddle or two. I mean, Paul Dano, such a great actor. But... Like you said, he is really the perfect adversary for Batman when it comes to especially this type of movie. Obviously, uh, his rogues gallery is so huge and diverse and it's really so fucking iconic. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, I think the most like the closest to uh, Batman on a men- like uh, on a mental level is 
the Riddler. Not only in just smarts, but just both being complete fucking psychopaths. <laughs> yeah, we had two psychopaths going head to head in this movie. Yeah, but this is a movie we're going to bring on Teddy for the spoiler discussion, and I just can't wait to talk about every single detail you know, getting into the spoilers, getting into some of the big moments of the movie. So we'll probably drop that either Sunday or Monday. Give everybody a chance to see it, but I hope you come back for that review. But overall, it's a success. It's a huge win. Robert Pattinson can't compliment this man enough. I hope there's enough momentum to maybe push him for an Oscar nomination because to me, this was a masterclass performance. He is such a fucking little sicko in this role and I can't wait to go back and watch this sicko work this case a hundred more times. Yo, people better watch out. That theme's gonna be going through my head all day. I might fight somebody. (laughs) Do you know how to fight? I did jiu-jitsu for a summer. Okay. Yeah. You're about to get beat up by a bunch of little kids like in Step (laughs) Brothers. Damn, we were making some good points in that video. Hey guys, Aaron and Nerd Suit Monkey here. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. What can I say about you guys that I haven't already said about myself? You are the most important part of the channel and the main reason we keep going strong. Like Bo says, you keep the lights on in the fridge, so the fridge is full. Or, or something like that. So, from everyone here at Nerd Soup, I'd like to thank you guys for your continued support. If you're interested in joining the ranks of our patron supporters, head over to patreon.com slash nerdsoup and check out the rewards we offer to our patrons. We recently dropped some new stickers for you guys to check out, or you could choose a tier that will allow you to select a movie, show, or video game for us to review. We've got a full slate of fan-suggested reviews coming your way, and we're really excited about the chance to review some of those movies and shows. We've also got t-shirts, mugs, behind-the-scenes videos showing how we bring our videos to life. And once again, thank you to all our Patreon pledgers who have been supporting us throughout the years. Without you, we wouldn't be able to convert all your pledges into cryptocurrency, so thank you from my future self for making us rich.